Hey guys, so I'm Tattoo Hedera. I'm Emily Hedera. Uh, so uh, today with uh, conversations with the Hedera's, we're going to talk about um, relationships, boyfriend uh, and girlfriend. Uh, do people even say that anymore? I don't know. Do you they know, go around? Dude, that was a big thing. I would always, you want to go around? I never knew what... We all know you didn't. But right, the thousands of women you've had. Thousands. Thousands. So, um, a big thing is, um, and it's, it's just crazy because we have uh, our son, he's 15, there's no girlfriend yet, and we're we're um, very worried about his first girlfriend and the heartache of the first breakup. I don't think I'm going to take it. I'm going to be taking it back. <laughs> and he's my stepson, but I call him my son. Um, and that's a whole other conversation about relationships, right? Uh, we are a blended family. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have kids, but my husband has two. Um, but I treat them like my own. So yeah, Em's a really good mom. Um, the boys love her. The boys are always they're. It's crazy because they all have like their own like text messages with each other, and they all have their own like like stories. And I'm always like, hey, "What's going on?" They're like, oh, "You don't want to know." <laughs> no. I'm like, "Dude, I'm the dad." They're like, "Yeah, whatever." So it's it's crazy because the the dynamics uh, are of a like, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, we're we're a tight family. But we want to talk about that. Like, um, I know, like me growing up, you know, um, I lost them when I was very young, and uh, but you know, how old were you when you first got married, tattoo? I don't call him tattoo. I call him Joel. Joel's, but, Joel's my real name. But uh, um, uh, so I, so I, I got married when I was uh, fifteen, gonna be sixteen. Uh, I had Christian. I was be fifteen, gonna be sixteen. My oldest boy. Um, you know. My, my 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 parents divorced when I was real young and my mother um, did her best. She worked a lot, she worked two jobs. Uh, she would come make, make dinner at home, which meant that I had a lot of time by myself, you know, and I just got in trouble, you know. Um, but what, what I was talking about was like relationships, right? Like, you know, when you're young, what happens? You fall in love, right? Your first boyfriend or girlfriend, and you're kind of like, oh, she's everything and they break your heart. Or he's everything. Yeah. But this happens even now. Yeah, it does. We it, just had a conversation with one of our best friends, like a sister to me, about this. Yeah, and it's crazy because we always think that's the one. And then something happens and then we cry our heart out. Oh, Lord, I'm never going to fall in love with anybody. And then time flies and then you're so somebody else again, right? You get the feelings in your stomach. You're all, oh, this is the one. And then life goes on. I've been married twice. My third marriage with Emily, you know. And I told Emily, if this doesn't work out, I don't know. Men are looking very nice. <laughs> um, no, but you know, it's you know, me and Em are real open about our relationship. We're real, we're very open about uh, our past, you know, because what happens is you get you as a couple when you're especially when you're young, right? You're real jealous that they they've had other partners, right? And you're like you hold it against them, you know. But me and Em being older, you know, I me and Em met when we we're thirty. Five, Five? 35. Yeah, thirty-five. We met when we were thirty-five, Ooh, and. We're uh, old. She's old. She's older than me. Oh, by two months. That's Rel old. Relax. Uh, but, um, yeah, so we always talk about that. We always talk about relationships and we talk about our past. And I think it's, I think that the more we talk about it, the more, the more me personally, I feel that I'm closer to my wife because I understand the pain she went through. I understand the heartache she went through, you know, and I understand her hangups. So then it makes sense, you know, because sometimes she gets upset. I know that it's not me. I know it's because she's been through it before, you know. And it's crazy because she'll, I don't know if you know this, but Emily was on a show when it was called Say Yes to the Dress um, with someone else, not this husband. You said I was the first. <laughs> but I've never been married. Well, I've been married once. Um, so, but it was important uh, from a female perspective, what we, you know, we, we, we changed. We put everybody first. We'll do anything. I see me, myself and people go crazy. And then people want to judge you for liking someone or, you know, talk shit. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. You know, I think if you like someone, why do we make it so hard? Why do we kind of just say, I like you? Well, if they don't like you back, why can't we just move on? But we can't. It's for the clout. Oh, God. That's his favorite word right now. Him, did, him well, and my son. Well, I just learned it from these kids. <laughs> but, uh, like, but, like, but like I'm saying, like, and it's crazy, too, because what happened, I have, I, I used to have friends that, uh, that were married. Uh, they were high school uh, sweethearts. All their life, they were together, 
And it's funny because once they got older, like in their late 30s, 40s, they got divorced because they wanted to be something else. They wanted to change. They wanted, you know, something, you know, I don't know. They wanted to, you know. Well, I those. think it's important, like what we were talking about, like, you know, about change is that it's okay to change, but you also have to be together. You know, I think it's part of your growth process to grow on your own, but also grow as a couple in your couple. The support from your spouse, whoever it may be, um, needs to be there. So if you're going through a journey of I want to write, you know, we need that from your spouse to support that. And what what does that support look like? It might not be anything. It just might give you that time or that space. But we always just focus on the things that we're not. And we focus on the next person they're with because I used to call myself the good luck Chuck. Now, get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The what? The good luck Chuck. Everybody after I dated, like, got married. I'm serious. Or like our long-term relationships. Really? Yeah. But I hadn't dated a lot of great guys either. So don't get me wrong. I mean. That's very uh, true. Hey, hey. Top of the litter, my friends. Yeah, don't make me call <laughs> Don't make me start with you. But the thing is, is that we make mistakes. And sometimes at some time, uh, I had like four years where I was really messed up. I was in a long-term relationship, like in 10 years. Um, and I knew this person for 13 years. We had house, we had cars, you know, we had, my career was blossoming. He was blossoming, but it just didn't work out in the end. And mentally, I did not heal from that. I brought that coming back home because I wasn't here. And for four years, I was really messed up. I drank a lot. I, I was hanging out with people that really didn't care about me, who I thought were friends. And when you meet someone that finally understands what your struggles are or anything like that, that's a deeper connection. Um, of course, there has to be, you know, attraction and all that. And that's all first impressions. But what after that? What's the value you add to your relationship? I used to always tell Joelle, I don't need you, but I really, really want to be with you. And that's a big difference. Uh, once you start counting on someone because you feel like you need them, you know, you lost yourself and I don't want anybody to feel that because I was there for a very long time. Um, and we talk about that because we talk about our failed relationships. And like I said, we're open. Um, and as we still grow and we're still together, more things come out because you remember things or situations. And mm -hmm. um, we I don't come from a traditional family. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma raised us. My mom died when I was three. Uh, my dad has an alternative lifestyle. So it's really like, like he's a punk yes yes he's <laughs> in the subculture <laughs> and um and those things come to play um your friends that you hang around with there might not be the best influences it's really funny and we were talking about that right that friends so-called friends what you think you know that we had for years no longer support you or agree with you because you're not that same person you were 10 years ago yeah but then you also have the friends that you hardly see and when you do see them, it's kind of like it, like it never stopped. Oh yeah. And then those are you're like, man, those those these friends are gonna have for a lifetime. But on the same thing about relationships, I think a crazy thing is that, um, like people will get together, right? And then after a year or so, that person will try to change that other person. Oh yeah. Right. And it's crazy to me because you fell in love with them because they were different. You fell in love with them because everyone has good things and bad things about them, right? And you, and you take them both, right? And, and, and you get a whole lot of bad. No, <laughs> so fine. I said I was in my third marriage. Uh, <laughs> nah, but, um, but and it's crazy because people want to change each other. When you fell in love with that person, that's who they are. You know what I mean? And I always believe like you want your partner to be the best at whatever they do in life. And you want them to, to and, and the thing is that you want them to grow and you want them to change and you don't want them to be the same person. Right, because that's what life is, right? You're, and you're you watch them, you want them to reach their goals, and yeah. you, you root for their goals. And sometimes you're not part of that process, but you are because it's the support that they need. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No, no, you're you're totally right. You know, and I think too is that throughout life, and especially when you're like with somebody, you know, um, there's so many like bad things that happen, right? Everyone has good days and bad days, and it's so it's crazy to me because once, like our generation. And it seems like generations that, that, that are before us, you know, it seems like when things go south, oh, let me just give up, you know, because we're in a society now where it's easy just to give up and start Absolutely. new. Instead of older generations where we're kind of like, oh, okay, you know, we, we just keep on hustling, we'll fix what's wrong, you know. And I, I think, I think you said it right there. 
let's fix what's wrong. And people automatically just go the opposite way. They don't want to have those tough conversations. Um, I have to tell my husband constantly, how do you want me to communicate to you? See, but that's the thing is I hate when she tells me that because I'm all like, don't talk to me like that. You know, like I'm from the West Side, man. Like, just tell me like, hey, this is what... But me and my wife, we have our own way of conversating, right? And a big thing for me, though, is that, um, you know, they always tell you don't, don't go to bed angry. Well, my wife goes to bed angry a lot, right? <laughs> All the time. But, well, but, well, take, but why it, do I go to bed early? Yeah, but it's always, but she's angry because like, we, like, we didn't, like we didn't eat or I forgot to feed her or... <laughs> I know that's called she, eating. She, she I need to survive. She ate, she ate a piece of cake and she's mad at me. Yes, pretty much. Um, yeah, but the thing is that, you know, just because you get mad at someone doesn't mean the relationship's over. Doesn't mean you're like, uh, I hate you for the rest of my life. You know, because it's all, like, cause all, all it is is, hey, I'm upset for a reason. All right, I'm sorry. You know, fix the situation. Or just, I just leave her alone, you know, and then we'll talk about it later on, which is not mad. You know? And usually, we, sometimes we don't talk about it because it's not... We don't fight, I don't believe we fight, to say like, hey, I'm going to leave out that door. I'm going to go look for someone. We bicker. You know, he drinks my soda. I tell him it's mine. No. No, no. no. Hey, wait, wait. It's mine. Do not touch it. And nah, it's gone. No. So just check it out. I'm a big believer of this. <laughs> if you he buy makes, something. He makes his own rules. If you buy something and you leave it in the fridge for more than a day, hey, it's up for grabs. You know why? Because you didn't want it. And then it's going to go bad, money wasted. There's starving kids in Africa. No, no, no. So anyway, that's our story. Um, um, but besides relationships, you know, it's if you really love someone and you really want to make it work, you know, you have to do everything you can to make it work. You know, and uh, you know what's funny is a real, quick, a real quick story is that, you know, people see that we travel a lot, you know, and we're always doing something. And they only see the good things. They never see that we're arguing the whole time. Not we're arguing the whole time, but we, we, we argue a lot. Like when I get us lost. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, or like, you know, but it's always it's always something. But you know what? But it's okay because that's that, that that's our relationship, right? Like, that's everyone's relationship. It's good and bad, you know, and we argue. And it's because we're different people. We're two different people, two different ways of thinking things, two different, you know, and it's okay. And, and like, I want you to know that if you're ever doing, or like me and M, no, I don't know if you know, if you know, but me and them, we work together, right? We have a business together. You know, we do, we pretty much do everything together. So we're, we're with each other all the time. Like you know? 24 seven. Yeah. So we're always together. And, um, so it's easy to get on each other's nerves. It's easy to be like, oh, uh, you know, to something easy to set you off, you know? But uh, on the flip end, when we try to do things separately, we end up coming back together like, where are you at? Why don't you come? Yeah. So it's kind of like a two-fold. You got to figure out what that balance is. Um, but go ahead. Yeah. So um, if you're struggling with a relationship, you don't know what's going on, you know, hopefully this helps you just a little bit. Maybe it helps you figure out like, hey, you know what? Everyone's good. Cause that's the thing is that no one talks about it. So you think you're the only one. You know, I know when I, when I was younger, I was like, man, the perfect relationship, you don't argue. That's not true. You know, you want the arguments. You know, because you're two different people. You want that. Well, you want feelings and you want to be truthful. And our generation, ours who are older, our men weren't taught to have feelings. You know, mm -hmm. they they weren't taught to talk about it. They weren't taught to, hey, this hurt my, my hurt me. And they see that as weaknesses. And I don't, I, it's not. It's actually a freaking strength to mm -hmm. say this is my issue. But... People have to work on it. People but, have to talk about no, it. No, she's right. But it's hard because, like, like, like I grew up in the courts, right? And we were always taught, hey, be a man, stop being a pussy, throw some balls, hey, don't, oh, don't cry. And that's what we we're taught, right? You always push it down, push it down, push it down, right? And then when you get older, you're just an emotional wreck because you can't deal with it. You're an emotional wreck now. You don't know how to deal with stuff because, you, you know, all your life you've been told to man up. And then now you have no idea how to control those feelings. And you don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm supposed to feel. And as women, we take it personally. I know I do. So I'll, I'll give a perfect example. I'll talk to my husband, hey, what's going on? Da, da, da. I talk about ideas, all this stuff. He, he just shuts me out, right? Not all the time, but I'm just giving an example. But he'll start to unload on his friends. And I'm there because his friends are my friends and I consider them my brothers. And he's unloading on them and they're telling him almost identical what I told him. And he's like, oh, man, thanks, man. You're the best friend I ever had. And I'm like, what? 
what's going on. But I have to step back and and be just relieved that he had that release to someone. And we can't take it personal. When he wants to talk to you, he will. I mean, that's why, that's why he gets mad at me when I tell him, hey, tell me how you want to be communion. You want me to write your notes? You want me to write uh, whatever it is? And no matter what I try, it doesn't work. So it's just going to have to be me being nagging. And that's what happens. We've been together seven years. I see the same thing going on for the next seven years. <laughs> yeah, nagging to get things done. Perfect example, I ate cake the other day because I told him to take the meat out. Well, oh, take the meat out for we can have dinner. Well, I did a Zoom meeting, right? I come back. What are we going to cook? You didn't take nothing out? Oh, no. He was hoping I said, hey, let's go to Griff's Burgers. Why couldn't you just say that in the beginning, sir? What are you talking about? I, I don't know. I just, I, I got real animated. At the um, no, you know, like, like she told me to take the thing out. And I was kind of like, man, I don't want no damn bacon. You know, I was all like, I want some burgers is what I want. So that's what it came down to. If I have to slide my way into getting a burger, I'm getting my burger. But anyway, that's our conversation for today, guys. Yeah. And uh, you can ahead. also, like, mm -hmm. we're not experts whatsoever. We're just being open about us. Um, I think we have a good, healthy relationship mm -hmm. um, because we're very honest. Um, we do have emotions, ups and downs. But any, we kind of kind of come like ask a stranger, you know, if you have something to ask, it doesn't have to be relationships. Mm -hmm. We're open about our business. We're open about like our nonprofits. We're open about our careers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm HR by trait. Uh, besides an entrepreneur, my husband is a, we'll call him a chef, but he cooks, I guess, um, by trait, right? Um, but we're very open and we're also open about our relationships with our families and our friends. Um, our, uh, you can ask our friends. We're very transparent mm -hmm. and we always help in our community. So anything, any kind of advice we can give, not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. um, we're here. We want to be that open ear for you. We want to be able to have that outlet for you. Um, and yeah, what else? That's it. Like Emily said, if you guys have hey, you guys want to talk about, you want us to talk about something in particular, or, hey, you know what, I'm going through this. Maybe you've been through it before. Just message us, you know, and we'll get through this together. I always will say our saying is? Always do small things with great love. Always. Always. We love y'all. We'll see y'all soon. Bye. Bye.